directly across from the launch pad. It is launch pad 39A. It is directly behind me. It is the same launch pad that the shuttle Atlantis flew from on the last shuttle mission nine years ago. It is the same launch pad the Apollo moon mission, Apollo 11 flew from. Crew Dragon is loaded. On board, Doug Hurley, Bob Bankin. I've got to tell you, it looks like they're going to fly today. We are about T minus 20 minutes to go. Weather conditions, skies are blue, no clouds in the sky, no threat of lightning, no threat of rain. There is a very small launch window. If all goes well, at 3.22.45, the engines will ignite and they will fly. Why do they have to fly at that same exact time? It's because the International Space Station has to be right above them. It is soaring 250 miles above the Earth at 17,000 miles an hour. Why does it have to be so precise? It's because of fuel concerns. Let me show you how this mission is going to unfold. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition, lift off. The Falcon 9 has a thrust greater than five 747s at full power. The astronaut taxis the Crew Dragon. On board are NASA veterans Bob Bacon and Doug Hurley. Bacon last flew on the shuttle in 2010. Hurley flew on the final shuttle mission in 2011. Now, they won't be wearing the traditional orange shuttle suits you're used to. They'll be outfitted in SpaceX's white and gray futuristic spacesuits. This mission is called Demo 2. In the midst of more development than we've ever had before in NASA's history, uh, we are going to launch American astronauts on American rockets from American soil. The Dragon spacecraft is a capsule, not a shuttle. It's more like the Russian Soyuz spacecraft and NASA's Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo capsules from the 60s and 70s. The rocket flies from historic Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. My heart is sitting right here, and I think it's going to stay there uh, until we get Bob and Doug safely back from the International Space Station. But between now and then, there's still work to do. Um, I've got thousands of SpaceX employees who are focused on this mission. About two and a half minutes after liftoff, the Falcon 9's first stage booster will separate from the upper stage and begin preparations for a landing back on Earth. In order to stick the landing, that's what they call it, the rocket must execute a flip maneuver before firing its engines for a boost back burn and entry burn. SpaceX plans to land the rocket on a drone ship called Of Course I Still Love You. It will be stationed in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Florida. Just a few seconds after the first stage separation, the rocket's second stage will fire its engines for about six minutes. Crew Dragon spacecraft will separate from the rocket's second stage. At this point, Crew Dragon will be on its own in space for the first time. Once it's separated from the rocket's upper stage, the spacecraft will perform a series of phasing maneuvers to gradually approach and dock with the International Space Station. That's expected to happen about 19 hours after liftoff. Thursday morning, just shy of 11.30. They'll open the hatch, if all goes well, at 1.55 p.m. You know, the future of human spaceflight is going to be very different than it is today. We think about what we're doing on the International Space Station to commercialize low Earth orbit. Um, we envision a day in the future where we have a dozen space stations in low Earth orbit, all operated by commercial industry for their own purposes, and that NASA could be a customer of those, of those space stations. The Demo-2 astronauts will spend anywhere from 30 to 119 days at the International Space Station. NASA and SpaceX haven't decided just how long this mission is going to last.